if I took a minute, one minute, to tell you about each Coloradan who died of COVID today, we would run out of time here. We're seeing more than 45 deaths a day, more than at any other time in this pandemic. Because of the lag in reporting deaths to the state, we've got to look back about a week and average things out. Day after Thanksgiving, 59 Coloradans died of COVID, the most ever on a single day. If the vaccine's in sight, an FDA advisory panel approved Pfizer's version today. It could arrive in Colorado as soon as next week. Our new Sher Roy considers what life will look like after the vaccine. Don't worry, I'm not going to keep showing people getting poked in the arm throughout this story. I am going to introduce you to two health experts from UC Health and Denver Health talking about what happens after someone is vaccinated. Are we still wearing masks and social distancing and paying attention to who we're hanging out with? You should. And so there's a couple of caveats to this, obviously, is that certainly the second dose is necessary. So you have either 21 or 28 days between doses yeah. before um, you have potential protection. And then there's still probably another week or two after the second dose for that to be fully effective. The other piece of this, uh, so you may be protected. Um, the question is, okay. though, is everybody else protected? What is that critical threshold? And some of this is, I don't know that we can truly predict. The the idea, obviously, okay. is that we want to limit the spread of the disease so that the disease goes away or goes to such a minimum that it's not overwhelming everybody's lives. Mm -hmm. One of the novel things about this, these vaccines is that they seem to work pretty well in people over the age of 65, which is fantastic. One thing that you should know, though, is that uh, the data that they've collected so far is only a couple of months out. For somebody who is vaccinated, can they still, I mean, they can still get COVID and what do we know about how infectious they could be? Yeah, and that, that's the million dollar question and that's what we don't know. We presume you can still get infected. So you still have the virus, you know, in secretions and could pass it on to somebody else. Vulnerable populations get vaccinated, but then the general public is not. And how, how are those groups supposed to be interacting as we're working towards everyone getting vaccinated. And once grandma's vaccinated, she's probably protected, but uh, it's not perfect. And you could you could still, um, you know, potentially give that to her or grandma could even give you, potentially give you uh, SARS-CoV, right? Very similar to what we've already said, you know, you still have to take those other precautions. So there is a lot of promising research about how these vaccines can prevent people from getting sick. And for those who do get sick, they can have milder symptoms. And then, of course, the big question, right, what happens to those infection rates? And, you know, both experts were saying that there is so much still, Kyle, to learn about both of these vaccines that are kind of on the horizon at this point of being rolled out. I certainly do. One really promising thing is that the effectiveness rate being so high means that we can have a lower percentage of the population vaccinated and, and still get uh, the right effects. I imagine that this can be like the flu vaccine, like you're going to have to get this at some kind of a regular schedule, right? Yeah. So, you know, at this point, the experts say that there's no set rule on that yet just because it's so new. But Michelle Barron with UC Health was suspecting that's kind of the way it's going to go. There's two things that they're looking at. And one is they were saying is that the coronavirus itself doesn't mutate as fast or as much as, let's say, the flu virus. The other thing that's going to be a big factor, too, though, is how long a person's immunity lasts. And all of that is going to be playing into how frequently people will need to get this vaccine. Yeah, I think a lot of people who have had COVID think they have a hall pass. It's just nobody knows how long it lasts. All right, Anusha, thank you.